Okay, we're back. And for this one, we're, we're going to talk about electric potential or voltage, that's the way most students remember it, um, and something called the potential gradient, or voltage gradient. And so potential is, is one of the more abstract things we have in ENM, uh, in fact, in all of physics. Weird quantity, it's related to energy, but not quite energy. Okay? It's uh, Electric potential is, is a quantity along with electric fields uh, that all electric charges produce. Every electron, every proton, anything you rub with fur and make your hair stand up, anything that has a net charge is producing electric fields and, and voltage in the space around it. What's weird about this is uh, one's a vector and one's a scalar. Okay. Fields are vectors and they create electric forces. Uh, electric potential is a, a scalar, just a numerical quantity that's related to potential energy. It, it energizes electric charges. So in, in physics classes, you often are given these two little equations. Q over R squared tells you how strong an electric field is some distance from a charge. And if you wanted to find how many volts are produced a distance away from a charge, it's KQ over R. Very similar to each other. But again, the, the electric field is a vector. So we technically, that's a vector equation, whereas voltage is not. For the potential of a single charge, if you pick any distance, if you're the same distance away from it in any direction, you'll have the same number of volts being produced. So I'll draw these, these dashed circles. If a, you have you know, an infinite number of, of circles centered <laughs> on the charge, each circle a different radius will have a different number of volts. Maybe this might be like a, a 10 volt line or, or circle around it. And in three dimensions, these would actually be spheres. And maybe a little farther out, maybe that's like a five volt line or surface. And these are called equipotential lines or equipotential surfaces if, if you're in 3D. Now, when you draw electric field lines for a positive charge, okay, we say that electric fields radiate from charges in all directions. Being a vector quantity, we have to give it a direction. And so we say that electric fields point away from positives and they go towards negative. Yeah, that's the convention that you're often given in a physics class. Now mathematically, these two equations that we use are very similar to each other. Okay? It just looks like a factor of of distance in their denominators, that, that's the difference between these. Um, we're we're going to get into that relationship in a deeper way by something called a gradient. It's something that allows you to relate a, a vector quantity that has direction with a scalar quantity that's just a number. Okay, that, it sounds weird if if you know you're kind of new to this idea. It's a special kind of derivative that we use. In MV calculus, gradients is kind of a big deal. Um, and for us, the potential gradient is, is going to be written as dv over dr. Okay. Um, how, does your, how does the voltage change as you move through space around charges? It's kind of, it's kind of a spatial rate. It's not a time rate. Um, but how, how does it vary in space? is what a gradient is all about. Um, so let's just dig in and see what you're given in, in something like an AP Physics C class. It's written as this derivative. Uh, if you've had mechanics and have ever done potential wells, we know that there's a, a, another relationship between force, let's say for gravity, okay, the force of gravity and the potential energy of gravity is also related through this gradient. In electricity, electric forces are related to fields and potential energy is related to electric potential or voltage. 
So if we substitute those into this force gradient okay, related to this, um, this, this potential energy, the charge drops out, that's just some number, and we have exactly the same kind of relationship between electric field vectors and this electric potential being created by a charge. Okay. So if you, if you say have some charges and you're looking at um, how the voltage varies through space, we made a little, little graph of that. Um, for a single point charge, it's just a one over R. Okay. So it's just a, a downward curve like I show here. The slope of that, okay, the slopes of curves are derivatives. The slope would be dv dr, there's our gradient, right? So the, the gradient is the slope of this particular kind of graph. And the pick any point on that, that curve and the slope of the tangent line, okay, the derivative, would tell you how strong the electric field is at that position, okay, at that distance away from the charge. So that's the connection. What's weird though, for a lot of people is, you know, Again, we're relating a, a vector, something with direction, to a scalar quantity. How do you give a, a derivative of direction? What does that even mean? Okay, so let's, let's see if we can get a little picture in your head to help you out with that. Um, in, in math, we define the direction of a gradient as in what direction you have to go to increase the quantity. It's, it's, the, it's the direction of, of increasing potential in this case. What, what, for a charge, which way do you have to go if you want to increase the voltage? So using KQ over R for a positive charge, we're, we're getting positive numbers. And if you're close to, a, say, a proton, okay, a small R value, and you're dividing by that, you get a very large voltage, a positive voltage. And as you get farther and farther away from the charge, it decreases and goes towards zero far away. Okay, so we have high voltage close to a positive charge, low voltage far away. And we would say that the direction of the potential gradient is which way does it increase? Well, it increases from low to high. So the direction of a potential gradient for a positive charge is towards the positive charge. Now, if, if you remember from mechanics, or if, if you just kind of look at this expression that we're, we're using today, there's a minus sign there. Well, a negative sign for vectors refers to direction. Okay, so this is saying that the electric field has to be in the opposite direction of the potential gradient. Well, if the potential gradient is pointing towards a positive charge, that means the electric field has to go in the other direction or point away from a positive charge. And that's why we draw the pictures the way we do. You know, when, when you show electric fields for positive charges, it goes away. This is the mathematical way of doing that. Okay. It's opposite the potential gradient. Obviously for, for negative charges, for an electron, uh, everything flips, right? We, we'll have uh, the gradient. So now we're dealing with negative voltage, negative numbers. When you're close to a negative charge, you approach negative infinity, and far away, it, it approaches zero. Zero is bigger than negative numbers. So um, the gradient actually points away from an electron. You increase voltage as you go away from a negative charge. And that means that the electric field flips around in the opposite direction of the gradient and points towards negative charges. And that's how we draw our pictures, right? So if you say electric fields go towards negatives. So this is how we think about these gradients and how voltage and how the potential is changing through space, depending on the sign of the charge, it turns out. And here, here's those pictures again with the directions of electric fields that we use based on and we, we can relate that now to the potential that these charges are also producing. Okay, so now the last couple things about this. Um, in nature, you know, we're told in chemistry classes, we're told in physics classes that 
nature forces are trying to push things towards lowest energy states. Things seek out the lowest potential energy. So this is why, this is basically what electric fields are doing to charges. You, you know, the, the, these fields that are being produced are trying to push positive charges and negative charges for that matter, attraction repulsion, always towards lower voltage, lower potential energy. It, just like gravity does, things fall for a reason. You, you're at high potential energy when you're up high in the air, lower potential energy is, is closer to the ground, gravity forces you to go to that lower energy state. Electric fields are doing the same thing. This is why if you were to put a proton and an electron, things that have equal and opposite charges in the same electric field, which is a black line, um, they go in opposite directions. They're going to feel the same force because they have the same charge in the same field. We multiply those to get the force value. Um, positives go with electric fields, seeking out the lower potential, the lower voltages and energy. Negative charges go opposite the field, seeking out the lower potential energies for it. They would have equal strength forces, different accelerations. Okay, the proton's a lot heavier, a lot more massive than electrons. So electrons are really gonna haul <laughs> uh, when, when they start getting pushed by electric forces much faster than, than protons would. And last but not least, um, going back to this idea of electric uh, equipotential lines, uh, one thing that comes up is why, why do the fields have to go through these perpendicular to these equipotential lines? That's something that you're told in your physics classes. This is how you get to see, um, you can actually see through, if you draw the field lines in here, cutting through these equipotential lines, why opposites attract, for example. These, electric field lines are going in the same direction from positive towards negative. They connect together, slicing through those potential lines, and suddenly you, you have, you can see the attraction. And with magnetic fields and iron filings, you can literally see this between the north and south pole. Magnetic fields would look, look identical to this. So it's kind of cool. And just a, a real quick explanation of why the fields have to go through these equipotential lines perpendicular is simply because in order to have an electric field between any two points, you need a delta V. You have to change voltage. If, if, you're, if you take two points on an equipotential line, there is no delta V. So there can't be any electric field parallel to that line. You can't even have an electric field come through here at an angle. That's not allowed because a vector going through something at an angle means you have a component parallel to it and a component perpendicular to it. That parallel part of an electric field can't exist because there's no voltage difference along that line. So the only option that you have is an electric field cutting through perpendicular to an echopotential line. That's, all, that's another aspect of this gradient. The vector has to be perpendicular to these to the scalar lines that you form. So kind of a lot packed into this, this particular video. Um, I hope it helps you, you know, play it over in different parts if you need to, as you start to learn about this. Um, it's pretty abstract, it's mathematical, um, but this gradient idea is, is the thing that kind of ties all these pictures together that you draw um, and you see in textbooks and stuff when you do your physics. Uh, so I hope it helps. And until next time, uh, we'll, we'll see you later.